Welcome back to another episode of Footy with the Boys. The Boys. The, the Blue Crew today. We all got blue kits on. We got the uh, the U.S. and Nico rocking the toffees. Nico, are you feeling the magic of the toffees right now? Dude, if we're anything on this podcast, we're we're for the boys. So, uh, you know, showing my love to you guys. Also, it's a Hamas jersey, so showing love to my country. Um. Yeah, I'll buy in. Why not? Jack Harrison, uh, you know, him and Saka right above Mohamed Salah and then everyone else. Pretty good. <laughs> exactly. Hey, we've been called the the arsenal of uh, the bottom half of the table. So, <laughs> hey, yeah, actually, do you see, you see Everton has more uh, expected goals than Man City this year? I did not. I, That's very surprising. That's team in blue. That's team in blue. That might not be a real tweet, but I saw that somewhere. <laughs> not somewhere. It's not accurate, but you did see it somewhere, so we'll we'll say it. We'll say yeah. it as a fact. Well, boys, we have a good episode today. We are making a Premier League tier list. We're going to have some entertaining categories there, and I'm sure some hot takes and some debates over what tiers do teams belong in. We're going to have some lock of the week updates, get a score update from producer P, as well as Palmer's weird-ass question. We'll see what he comes up with. But first, like our jersey suggests, me and Mike's, we do have some U.S. men's national team to preview here. They are playing Germany on Saturday. Germany, this will be their first game under Julian Nagelsmann. And this will be the third game, the first real test for Greg Berhalter's second stint. Gio Reyna is back. There's a lot of storylines here. Mike, what's the storyline that you're most excited to see play out? Um, probably Gio Reyna is the most interesting one to me. Um, the lack of Tyler Adams in the midfield kind of opens up a hole. I think the... Kind of the no-brainer is maybe Luca Della Torre slaps in because he's been yeah. playing quite a bit. But <laughs> I hope it's Gio. I hope we put Weston and Musa a little bit deeper and then Gio gets that 10 spot. That would be awesome. I'm not putting my hopes up for it, but if it happens, that'd be great. Who looks, more like, a, who looks more like a rat? Uh, Luca Della Torre or Jack Nomar? Luca Della Torre has had like the worst luck with facial injuries recently. He broke his nose <laughs> and got a massive black eye. El Pupo is is not doing too hot with the <laughs> injuries. But I have heard rumors from the camp is that they will be playing a 4-2-3-1 with a 10. Ooh. That was at least when Malik Tillman was still in the camp. I did jinx the fuck out of him by saying <laughs> buy his stock and legitimately two days after he does get hurt. So gets knocked out of the camp. That's that's not great, but don't worry, we have Alex and Dejas, who has just always been such a star performer for the US team, back into the camp. Uh, they'll also be playing Ghana afterwards, but we'll preview and talk a little bit more about that on the next episode. Uh, Mike, no Anthony. Robinson in this camp, he has the onsets of a sports hernia, so he's taking his time to rest. We still have Scally and Desk. Would you want to see both of them on the field, or would you like to see somebody like a Dewan Jones or a, one of the other options get get a chance? I would be interested to see Dewan Jones. He played a great Gold Cup, uh, Michigan State guy, so go green. Um, go green? Yeah, and Kind of mess around with a few options. Uh, Joe Scali, as you said. Suchino could play on the left back. We've seen that quite a bit uh, this season. Um, being on the right and left flanks. So a lot of options with Anthony gone. Um, interesting. Maybe we'll see Dejuan one game, Joe another. I'm not really sure. Nick, final question on the U.S. men's national team. In... Any recent memory, this may be the most in-form men's national team, club-wise, club form, that we have seen. We have Matt Turner coming off a clean sheet. We have Gio Reyna making his return. Pulisic, leading scorer for AC Milan. Musa putting in master classes. 
Balogun and Pepe knocking in some goals. Way is playing great. McKenney's playing great. It's hard to find many players that are are struggling at the moment. Can you think of any other time that there has been this much momentum going into a game? Do you think it? I mean, not as much like with with the squad that we have. Like we got a like just pretty talented player pool at the moment. Um, I think the missing piece and the guy that is even over Pulisic, I think the difference maker when he's at his best is Gio, and he's not exactly in form, obviously, because he's just getting back from injury um, and hasn't played much of Dortmund so far this year. So, um, yeah, yeah they're, they're in good form. I expect them to give Germany a good game. I could see them winning that game. I could see them tying. I could also see them losing. Depends how that goes. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I get, like, excited to watch this team now. Those are the options. Well, you're, hey, if you're they lose, like, you're not going to get shit on. They could <laughs> win. They could lose. But they could also draw. Nick Falderon with some beautiful uh, match yeah, analysis sorry. there. You're welcome. But now, we have the main event of our podcast. The tier list of the Premier League. The ultimate tier list. We will be sorting all your favorite teams into the exact best category. <laughs> with probably some pretty interesting names. And look at the first name on our tier list. Nick, why don't you place our first team, Arsenal? What tier are they in? And what is the name of that tier? Yeah, I think... I think... Fuck, it's hard. They're at, Arsenal's in the top tier of, of whatever we want to name it. I, I think Arsenal belong in champions like true champion contenders like i think that they and man city are the two teams that i can see most strongly winning the league this year probably man city a little bit more but i mean we just saw what happened this weekend both those teams can go toe-to-toe against each other and it just depends on the day um so i like i like that top tier um to be our champions contenders and i like it to be arsenal and man city i don't know what do we think, boys? Is Liverpool belong in that tier too, or what are the thoughts? I think Arsenal, City are front runners category. I don't know if I think of Liverpool. I don't think Liverpool has done enough this season to necessarily prove or establish themselves at those two level quite yet. Like, you feel the same, or you think? Am I putting City tier? up here now or later? You can put them yeah, down. Right. Let's go by tier, yeah. I think Liverpool has a shout for it. Um, based on the quality of players they have, the results they've had this season, um, the only loss that comes to mind is the, the Tottenham loss, which is really not their own doing. It's, <laughs> they got fucking screwed. So I don't think that should impact their their ranking. Um, yeah, I I put them as a, as a champion's Dude, we well. said it. We said it a couple times though. It's all about depth in this league, especially with like all the competitions they're playing. And I don't. I know you, you think they have some players on the bench, but they don't. Like they're not to the level where if if someone if if Sawsboy or Salah go down, or sorry, Sock, yeah, Salah go down, they're fucked. It, like they have, they don't have guys to be able to fill in for either of those two for an extended amount of time, in my opinion. Depth so, wins championships. I, our producer, I, I think please, they're so. just a little step below. I think if you're thinking who can win the Prem and who should be the favorites, I think Arsenal and Man City, I think there should be one below that could be maybe like a dark horse category. Like they could win it, but I wouldn't necessarily there. Like we're talking front runner. Arsenal and Manchester City, I think are the two front runners. So if we can change that category, just a front runner, I think there's a tier below that's, Potential. I think they're in a tier of their own. Then um, Liverpool. I agree. I agree with that. Tottenham, I, agree. But I agree with that. I, they're not a dark horse. If they let's, made a let's push just to call win them, the league. It let's, be call them <laughs> let's call them Liverpool. Let's call them Liverpool. <laughs> or even Bible like, here. like they have an out. I do think they can win the league. I think like, if we're giving the percentages to those three teams, it's like forty percent Arsenal. 45% Man City, and then, like, 15% Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's far more likely that Arsenal and City win. In the Liverpool category? What's that? 
No, Tottenham's not. Dude, Tottenham's not even in the next category. <laughs> Bro, we talk about depth. <laughs> we talk about depth. Our, Tottenham's got much more lack of depth than even a Liverpool has. Yeah, no. Liverpool and Tottenham don't belong in the same conversation. Ten-man like, Liverpool, oh, nine-man Liverpool almost beat Spurs. <laughs> like, Tottenham, come on. I think Tottenham might be in another one of their own. No. Liar. Hughes. You're falling victim. You're falling victim. You're falling victim to their shit schedule. I do not see them in the same tier as a Brighton, Newcastle. Flags wants uh, to make 20 tiers and put each team in one tier. (laughs) Dude, four of their wins are against the four bottom teams in the league. (laughs) What are you talking about? Quality team. You know what a fifth one is? Man, you. Let's go dog shit as our bottom category. And we are putting there. (laughs) Burnley, Luton Town, and Sheffield. Let's get that one out of the way. No, can we I, not call them no dog way. shit? Can we call no them way. like? Can we call them like trying their best? Sheffield's trying in a league of their own. It. Sheffield's no, they're in a league. not. Yeah, their tier is tied they Luton. Be in League Two. They Sheffield tied Luton. Should be in League Two. <laughs> <laughs> they were struggling championship. That's how I they, fucking reached. They it. tied they Luton. Just in the championship. Let's not say yeah, that. Lester, Lester would trounce them this year, and I put money on that. They tied Luton, bro. We can't put them in separate tiers. Yeah. All right. I so know. I would. Burnley, the second one in Palmer. They are going to. They they showed up slash. They're trying. Sheffield. Yep, you got that one. And then Luton Town, the orange, orange and blue, one. right after Fulham. Uh, yeah, right uh, behind back one, the back one. What the oh fuck God. are you talking about? This one? No, oh, the one right, you're right. right. Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah, yep. there we go. They showed up. What Sheffield, if we put Burnley, Luton? What if we put Burnley, Aston Villa, and West Ham on the same category and just call it Claret and Blue? <laughs> blue. I don't hate I it. They have as much in common as, as Sheffield does with these other two teams. Shut up. Oh, my God. You're such All a right. hater. After, okay, let's go back to the top. After Liverpool, I do think Spurs get their own no. category. No. They're not even in Europe this year. They're playing in one competition. Oh, Dude. But they are top of the table right now. They're playing. It's off their play. Look at They're who playing. they've played. They're playing better than Brighton. They're playing better than Newcastle. They're playing better than Aston Villa. They're Look playing better than Aston. at who they've played. But they I played bet. nobody. They beat Liverpool. Not man, Liverpool on an own goal. What they are you talking about? Well. They drew your front runner, Arsenal. Our worst game of the season, and it's a derby. You throw all derby they games are difficult. Drew the front runner. Oh, well, they drew the front runner. You, okay. Not, Mike, Mike, from a non. So, are we putting Wolves in the front runner in Champions League because Wolves beat Man City? Is that what we're saying? It's me. Tottenham is in the Liverpool category. No, you're not, bro. What are you talking North about? London pool. North Liverpool. North London pool. I don't know what we'll call it. Either in the Liverpool category or in their own category below. But they are not with Brighton. They're not with Newcastle. They are a tier above. There's definitely a tier break there. I wholeheartedly disagree. I think Newcastle is on the same level as Tottenham. I agree. What? It's not. Yeah. What's the difference between Wait. Newcastle has been struggling so much this season? Tottenham's been playing their best Tottenham soccer and it's not like. Table. Oh my god! Tottenham is top of the table. We can't put them in the same place as somebody who's an eighth. It's eight games in the season. And they're so top how we, of the table. So Arsenal beat City, so they can't be in the same tier? Like, what are you talking about? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But Tottenham has not been at the same level as a Brighton, Newcastle, Aston Villa, who I believe are all in the same tier. First of all, I disagree with that even. Second of all, I like this next tier to be – any of these three teams, I could see finishing. Let's come back to Tottenham. No, no, fuck that. Any of these three teams, in my opinion, can finish fourth. And those three teams are Newcastle, Tottenham, and Brighton. But I, I can no see... 
I can different. see those three right, teams. Let's go. Let's, let's just vote. So we get this part done. We can stop talking about Tottenham. Are we putting Tottenham in a tier of their own? I vote yes. Nick votes no. Mike, what's your vote? Um. Yeah, I think we can put them in a tier of their own. That's fine. Right, I think that's go. so stupid. There you know is what? not is democracy. There is not that big of a difference between Brighton or Newcastle and Tottenham. All right, there just Palmer, isn't. Palmer, you can name that one Audi Cup champions. Well, oh, great. The one and only. I um don't know how to spell that. Uh, it's Audi. Audi the like the car, you fucking the idiot. The what the fuck are you talking about, guy? I don't know this shit. The car? You don't know the car. All right. We're making a separate tier at the bottom for Palmer, and it says he doesn't know fucking cars. <laughs> he doesn't know how to spell. All no, right. I'll make one. All right. They're literate. Next year after, Nick, you had you said not the teams that are rock, paper, scissoring their way through their fixtures, Aston Villa, Brighton, Newcastle, who do you have in your next tier? I have Tottenham, Brighton, Newcastle. Villa goes in that same category. No, they don't. Yeah, they fucking trounced Brighton. Actually, I understand that. I could see, I could see it be Brighton, Newcastle, and then the next tier is Aston Villa, West Ham. How does Aston Villa get Below Brighton, dude. It was one game. It was a you're one not, game, and they destroyed them. You're not looking at like the whole story of how they've played. Aston Villa is just up and down. I don't trust them at all to finish in like fifth or six. Do you yeah, trust them I, to finish I, top I, six? I don't trust Brighton the same way I don't trust Aston Villa. That's not true. I trust Brighton more to finish fifth or six. This is going off of like who I am more confident in. I am much more confident that Brighton and Newcastle can finish. I'm also not confident that Tottenham's going to finish above Brighton and Newcastle. So I'd put them on the same fucking tier. You need to get over that. What? So we can't talk about it? Is this not a goddamn podcast where we have conversations? You're just bringing it up nonstop. What do you mean? This is what we're doing. You need to forgive her, Nick. You need to forgive her. I think we could put like five or six teams together here. And I think it could be... Five or six Newcastle, years? Brighton, Aston Villa, West Ham, and Tottenham. I don't differentiate those teams a whole lot. I think Brighton and West Ham. From strength of squad, from performance this year, from depth, from manager. I, I think they're all pretty close. And they are close on the table, so it makes sense on paper. I agree. I agree more with Tottenham being lumped in with those five than Tottenham just being in another. Although I do I, think there's, I do think there's something about Villa and and um whatever the fuck, uh, West Ham. West Ham. I yeah. vote with Nick to go for Brighton, Newcastle, and then West Ham, Aston Villa. I think there is a bit of a difference between the two. Hold teams. on, I'm not just, I'm not only doing West Ham, Aston Villa. Who else are you including in that? West Ham. I just mean, drew Newcastle. Also true, which I like. You're I like every single result of saying they did this, they did that. It's, it's yeah, but those are, are that's what you're just saying. What are you when saying? You that's exactly your argument for Tottenham. What are you talking about? Season, not one result, though. Their whole season is they beat the those bottom four in the league. <laughs> what are you talking about? They are number one in the league, and we put okay. Congratulations. Four. Should we give them the trophy now? Eight games in, they're Wait, like schedule. definitely going. Wait to your decision, Flex. Does strike the schedule mean anything? Does that does that mean nothing to you? It means nothing. But what I'm saying is that him saying, "Oh, they drew," that doesn't mean that that alone puts them a tier. In the like a true Alabama football fan, that's what you are. I mean, what I, is, what is this tier? What's the tier? If 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 that's a tier, then I say we put the four in. I say we say West Ham, Brighton, Newcastle, Aston Villa, and I like I Europa League. To. Europa League contenders. If we if they don't go together, I, like, I need a valid I, reason that these teams are are not. My reasoning that that Aston is down is I just don't trust them. I like I understand they have quality all over the pitch, but I feel like I honestly it's I don't trust Unai Emery in the Premier League, and maybe Man that's you? my scars. Man U. Man U does not go up there. <laughs> Get back down New- there, boy. I'm a Man Newcastle's U. Newcastle's black and white, the blue. Black, white, blue. 
Right and after Fulham, the other one. Yep. Yep. Nice. And then Aston is the very first one. Wow. Are we are we ordering it though? Are we switching West Ham and Newcastle? I would I would put it I would put it Newcastle, Brighton, West Ham, Aston Villa. I would put Brighton first and then Newcastle. And then I'm okay with West Ham over Aston Villa right now. I like West Ham over Aston Villa. Put that on second part. That's the order I, I think go. That's, I think that's pretty fair. Um, I don't think it's Europa League contenders is the category. I think it's more like, I don't know, Shake It Up Baby or Four For More <laughs> or The Beatles. Something with the four. What are you involved. talking about? <laughs> what the fuck is coming out of your nice mouth right now? What are you talking about? It's a nice name. I like that. They're a bit spicy in the Okay. Uh, next one is frauds, right? So Chelsea yeah. Man U. <laughs> frauds. Oh, I think Chelsea is the name of the category. No, it's frauds. <laughs> Chelsea Man U. No, I think it is the name. Whatever is the Chelsea. name of the category is. Chelsea. Man U isn't Chelsea either. though. Man U is pretty close to Chelsea at the moment. No, they're not. They both just suck, but like very different stories of why they suck. All right, all right. Who Chelsea and Man U. The third Chelsea. one and the last one. Okay. And Man U. I think it should be like spend a lot of money with the S as a dollar sign. <laughs> sure. Both have had Mason Mount at one point. Yeah, neither Mason one of them. <laughs> MM7, baby. Mount. Purgatory. All right. Next one, I think we do... Uh, comfortably mid table. Why don't we do a category just for Everton? Really unlucky and should be comfortably mid table. We have six teams left. <laughs> what happened to the? What happened to the discussion? Well, best logo is not a real category. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Palmer just likes wolves for some reason. <laughs> it's not even fan, close bro. to the best logo, by the way. <laughs> Fucking cap. Who's better? Uh, I like the Brentford's logo the best. If I'm being honest. Which one's that? Wait, what'd you really? Think, what'd you think the, the buzzing logo was, bees. Oh, uh, the bees are right, yeah. Huh? Palmer, what'd you call that logo? Wolves? It's the best logo. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you called it a cat. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Their name is Wolves. <laughs> yeah. I had to check that real quick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was just him talking right. about your pussy. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. BG13 podcast. Okay. Is it? All right, all right. We're getting sidetracked. We're getting sidetracked. I actively After... click not for kids when I post these. <laughs> After fraud, fraud money. What's our next level? I think just bleh. Like whatever. They're not going to get relegated. They're not going to finish like higher than ninth. Meh. Yeah. Like meh. Meh. I'd put. Is... Uh. Actually, all these teams suck. Let me know. I'd put Everton in there. Crystal Palace there. I'd put Everton in there. I'd put Crystal Palace in there. I'd put Nottingham Forest in there. I'd put Fulham. Uh, Fulham? You think? Yeah. I don't think they're in trouble. I just don't think they're good. They're also going to lose Paulinho in January. But this is this is tier list right now. I, I so what, are we going to change Palace it tomorrow morning? Later. I put Crystal Palace a step above. Everton, Nottingham, and yeah. Fulham. I think Crystal Palace think so. kind of goes into that fraud category, but they're not frauds. Um, That's but they're they like have. level footing. They're like level footing with Manchester United and Chelsea based on quality. I, I don't think so. I don't think that. I don't think based on quality, but I think based on results that they'll end up getting. Based on current form, maybe, but it, I, Man U and Chelsea have to finish higher than Crystal Palace. Yeah. I don't, I mean, Crystal Palace just beat Man U. That is. Something to weigh in. No, it's I'm, not. I'm very much <laughs> wanting Fulham in this Mac category. The FFC there, Fulham Football Club, Palmer. I'm gonna drag him if, up. Where am I if putting this? Fulham's in there. Then Brentford's yeah. in there, and I don't think either of those teams belong there. You think what? If Fulham's in there, Brentford's in there. Brentford and Fulham yeah. are the same exact team. Brent, Brentford and Fulham are not the same team at all. They're the exact same team. Brentford's they got are a cool not logo. At all. Brentford lost to Everton. Also, Wolves should be in meh. Fulham is beating. Wolves just Fulham. beat Man Brentford. City. Brentford can't defend and Fulham can't score. So, 
But they're Fulham similar, but getting, Fulham's still getting results. Look at the table right now. What are their results? Who who the what results are they getting? I mean, yeah, they're a few points ahead. I mean, they're right behind Chelsea. What the fuck? Oh, they're on eleven points, <laughs> like three wins. I, Palace. Yeah. I don't know, man. Hide Arsenal. I don't know. Beat Everton. I, I think I think I think Fulham sucks. I, they're, in, they're in that category. They're above not now. What player does points. what whoa? <laughs> Two, Two points. points man. Crazy. <laughs> what I think what does what player on Fulham is good? Demry. Like Herrera. all those are just Andreas normal. Herrera. They're only like actual good players, Jopalina. Everyone else is just normal Premier League players. Their goalkeeper? Uh, that's that's Burnt Leno. Yeah. They still do well though. Do they? they do. Every time I watch them, I don't like watching them. Alex play. Owobi, Everton legend. Arsenal legend. Alright, like if you want to put Fulham and man, I'd, I'm whatever. I'm not arguing I, for much. I'm arguing for men. Cr- Crystal Palace sure. has to be outside of this category. I, Dude, they're not no, the same level talking? as these teams. I think they're, they're better than Everton. I think they're the top end. So I think the, the Eagles there, Palmer, they are the number one team in this. There is no way that Crystal Palace and like Chelsea and Man U are on the same tier. Yeah, there's they no are. Tier. No, dude, there's, no, a no difference. Not. there's a difference. Yes, they are. No. Not Chelsea and Man U, there is a difference. Dude, what's the difference? Crystal Palace is ahead of them in the Premier League standings? Uh, the difference is expectations and overall quality in the squad. I don't give a fuck about expectations. Yeah, Manchester United and Chelsea's expectations is to finish top four, and that's not happening. I know. What I'm saying is that there's a lot more pressure to play at Chelsea and Man U than there is to play for Crystal Palace, and that means something. And there's a lot, like, it might say be what negative. you want. Crystal there Palace is... has no pressure if they can get some results. I, oh, Mike, I am. It was an upset when Crystal Palace beat Manchester United. It'd be an upset if Crystal Palace beat Chelsea. That's the thing. It'd be, they're, it'd they're be an upset based on the club. name of the club. I don't think that's weighing into the and the quality of the squad. You were fucking oh. telling me on Sunday that the midfield of Chelsea is good enough to get in the Champions League, and now you're saying Crystal Palace is on the same tier of them. Are you fucking stupid? What are you talking Nick, about? Your midfield's three players. It's not fucking eleven, dipshit. That way you the competition. Okay, so who else is going to be playing with Crystal whoa. Palace? What are you talking about? No. Crystal Palace's back line, miles better than Chelsea. Miles oh better God. than Manchester United. Life, life serious? on the line. You're playing, you can choose to be Chelsea, Manchester United, or Crystal Palace, and you have to win the game. Who are you choosing? Right now? Yes. I'll probably take Crystal Palace, dude. You're a fucking no. idiot. <laughs> You're a fucking moron. I want, I want a clip of that showing oh, what a liar yeah. looks like, bro. Yeah, you better post that shit on Instagram tonight. <laughs> this is All like right. you. You know what you sound Hudson like? They're going to be you sipping a pint in the bar. You sound like it. Max Kellerman being like, I want Igadala. <laughs> Like you're, you're a fucking idiot, bro. <laughs> I'm not comparing Igadala to Steph Curry here. I'm comparing Igadala to fucking. No, Head you're comparing Rudy. Crystal Palace to Man U and Chelsea. That's what you're doing. You're not comparing Igadala to not anyone. Man U and Chelsea have passed. Man U you're and Chelsea have right now. Crystal right Palace. Now, there's, still, there's still a gap in quality. They would still be favored. They're still a better team. Who's their striker on Crystal Palace? At the moment? <laughs> Who is it? It's Edward, probably, but oh, Elise. No, it's not. He's a winger. Shut up. He goes up top all the time. Not- He's a right winger on their four-three-three. Will Hughes, Jeffrey Schlupp, and Jao Riedewald. That is what you are banking on. Nathaniel Klein and Sam Johnstone, Jordan Ayew. This is a team that you think is better than Crystal pa- or than Man U and Chelsea. This is the team I think that's. That's who you're backing. Yeah, I'm taking it. I'm taking okay. it. I think it's. Well, true. then you're a fucking idiot. There, there's no arguing with it. We we know what's happening. There's no. There's I mean, no we're gonna talk about midfields. We got where do we have Brighton? 
We've been shitting on Brighton's midfield all fucking season. But Brighton's midfield. Look how is... high we have them up. But they perf- they're they performing, and they do have a lot better players than a Crystal Palace. They also, look at the front line. Like, Brighton has a better midfield than Crystal Palace. We all agree there. Brighton has a better front line. Like, what are you talking about? Either way, well, yeah, you were trying to make you were trying to make a stupid you're trying to make a stupid point there. Let's not get into no, the point you're trying to make. I'm honest with it. I stick with it. I think Crystal Palace finishes higher than at least one of these teams, but they're in the same echelon. All right, so I let's make a bet then. I think that Man U and Chelsea finish higher than both Crystal Palace this year. I am willing to bet. Uh, How many points? How many points above? No, just they're above. You're saying that they're better. What are you talking yeah. about? But how much better are they? How much? How many points are you saying they're better? No, they're one. better. Give me, give me a fucking number. You're so adamant about it. You're so yeah. adamant about yeah. it. Which yeah. of the should be over? What's your number, What's your number then? What's your number? It's gonna be within three, dude. It's gonna be within three. The wild. The... All right. Your man's gonna team die team? in like within a month, bro. What are you talking about? Yeah, and then they'll win it for him. <laughs> what are you, what are you <laughs> giving them fuel to the fire? That's, <laughs> that's all they need. Okay, do you think Crystal Palace is playing good soccer right now? No, they're, they're, they're not very fun to watch. Okay. I think that how they're playing right now is pretty capped on their talent. I think Man U and Chelsea are both underperforming based on their talent. Like, how can So, they by be... that logic, I think that Man U and Chelsea, throughout the course of a season, will be better and on a different tier than Crystal Palace. Like, if you look at the majority of the results, look at who they're matching up and being very close to. It's Brentford they're drawing. Fulham they're drawing. Nottingham Forest they're drawing. You You mean the the teams in the same fucking tier we have them in? The majority of the games that they are playing, they are showing their level at this tier. Not above Manchester United. Yes, they beat Manchester United, but... That doesn't mean that they're throughout the entire season a tier in that same tier or above. Also, Manchester United lost. Crystal Palace did not beat Manchester United. The goal from Crystal Palace was one of the luckiest goals I've ever seen. It was a banger. Yeah, but their center back Joachim Anderson on a corner volley. Like, what do you like? <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm not going to fucking bash him for having a little class in the back line. Yeah, yeah, because he produces that kind of class on a right, weekly right. basis. We need to move forward from Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace should not be. Uh... You know, you, switching the topic really quick. I fucking hate you, flags, because you let Mike talk more about Crystal Palace than you let me talk about Tottenham. So there is some serious, like, weird Michigan bias going on right yeah, here. We've talked bullshit. plenty about about Tottenham. Just because I'm my family immigrated to this country doesn't mean I can talk any less. Fuck you, flags. <laughs> Guys, looking one tier below, obviously not best logo tier, but Wolves and Brentford. Hey, what the fuck? They, is that not Wolves? just a good tier? No, no, Wolves are above. Oh, Wolves animals. are on the same tier as Nottingham and Fulham. Are they? Have they proven yeah. that? Tier? Yeah. Are they and then on I the think same Brentford tier as Crystal and, Palace? Brentford and Crystal Palace. I, yeah. Uh, Brentford and, and Bournemouth. Put them at yeah. the end, though. Yeah. I think Bournemouth, Brentford are kind of probably in the same. Yeah, the, I could see them getting relegated if it was a normal year of good promoted teams. <laughs> you can put that one as squeaky bum time. They're hoping they don't get relegated. They're hoping they don't fuck this up. I'm sorry, guys. You're showing way too much faith in Tottenham right now. They're top of the table. Way man. too much faith in wow. Tottenham. Watch them play. They are playing good football. Is there okay, anything Crystal we Palace, want to change on this? You, Flags, you can't you can't do the same argument back and forth. You say Crystal Crystal Palace being above Man U and Chelsea doesn't mean anything, and then you say Tottenham being above everyone means something. Like what but I'm not, that's not what I'm saying is Tottenham is playing well and they're at the top of the table. You can only play who you are playing. Crystal Palace, you can only play who you play, and they've shown in that that they've drawn versus Brentford, versus Fulham, and versus Nottingham Forest. I think that it's very possible. I, mean, I, think I won't. Wolves I won't could say be higher based off that. I agree with that. I think it's very possible that we that right now this is the best soccer that Tottenham plays all year. Does anyone disagree that. with that? 
And if they have I, a major injury. I think I mean, right those, now serious they're getting players, the they're most fucked. out of the squad that they possibly can. Do we agree with that? This is the what? I think right now they're getting the most out of the squad than they can. That they can. Barring Richarlison find some form, I agree. Okay, yeah. so they're getting the most out of the squad that they possibly can. Do we think it is likely that that continues for 30 more games? Yeah. No. I think I don't. I, I'm I not think they're in form, but they're going to be at I, good form. Well. I think they take a midseason dip or a late midseason dip. I but think could, that around. They don't take a dip. Like Arsenal I think that around dip. Christmas. I, I think yeah. Arsenal hasn't even played their best soccer until these past two weeks. Bar, like, not even counting the Champions League game. I think that. Come Christmas time, we're going to see those top three teams pull away at least a little bit, like January, February. And then we're going to see Tottenham not, like, below those teams, maybe, like, a point above a Brighton or a Newcastle. And I think that means they're on the same tier. We'll see what happens. What's Tottenham's Tottenham's next game, Palmer? Tottenham, what's what's their next game? I think they're top four favorites, Flags. I agree with you. I'm just saying I don't think there's that much of a difference between the They play play Fulham next. I said Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham. Can we have Tottenham's schedule up really quick? Tottenham's pretty easy. They play Fulham, Palace, Chelsea, then Wolves, Wolves. then Villa, then City. Okay, here we go. There's the stretch where they're going to start faltering. End of November. Villa, City, West Ham, who's below that? And Newcastle. I'm looking at those four games. I think they get one win out of those four. Wait, I think they get one win. Villa, City, West Ham, Newcastle. I bet they get one win, they draw twice, and they lose once. That's what I'm betting. A benefit to Tottenham, though, is not playing Europe. They're going to be more fresh than a lot of these teams going into games. So if they stay away from some injuries, I, I like them to finish ahead of most of those teams. I. I, I can see that what Flags is going at. I think they're favorites. I just don't think they're, like, a tier above. I think that's the tier difference, is that they're favorites for top four. Could you say that same thing for a Brighton? Could you say that same thing for a Newcastle? No, you'd say they're they're challenging, not favorites, though. I can say that Newcastle is. Liverpool versus Arsenal and City. You could say that, yeah, Liverpool could get there, but they're not the favorites to win the title. That'd be Arsenal okay, City. Okay, yes, but I think the percentages are much different. Like I said, 45 City, 40 Arsenal, 15 Liverpool. I think that, like, those teams are much closer than the gap between Liverpool, Arsenal, and Man City. I, I agree. I think it's a closer tier, but I don't think it's still I, – I still don't think it's the same tier. I still think there is a significant difference. enough A significant enough difference for a tier. I just – I'm I, – I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm not even trying to shit on Tottenham. I, again, I. I think that like for where they are in their project, it's really impressive. I like what Andrew's doing. They've been playing attractive football, um, despite Arsenal playing bad. It's a derby game, so to come to the Emirates and get a point that's huge for them, um, and a letdown for us. But I just like let's pump the brakes on this being a team that is considerably above these other teams when they just lost their main striker. They're very overly reliant on two players. And oftentimes, like, some of their individual performances look pretty shaky. You could say that about Liverpool. They're very reliant on a, a Salah, Salah and, like, Van Dyke. Yeah, but the difference is then they have Luis Diaz, and then they have a Darwin Nunez, and then they have... A Andrew Robertson yeah, and Alexander so, Arnold. Yeah, but I think that's that's the depth. That's the depth that puts Liverpool one step above. But I do think that I agree they're one step above. I just don't think that they're that Tottenham are one step above. Like, I, I here's a an alternate question. Newcastle has more depth than Tottenham. I mean, I agree. This, I agree. Is Arsenal should Arsenal be the first name on the list, or should Manchester City be the first name on the list? I would still I think, choose Manchester City, I think, to be the the favorites if I were betting favorite. Yeah, I, I think it's a toss sweet. up. I think it's a toss up. I kind of a I'd give the edge to City, but it's close. It's like you have to give the edge to City. I mean, they've won the league three years in a row. They uh, 
I mean, just by staying power. But, I mean, anytime those teams play, it's going to be exactly what we saw this past weekend, chess match. Like, who wants it more? Who's going to get the bounce? And it, last week, all those questions turned Arsenal's way. At, uh, at the ad, I'm sure it, it, like, I could very likely see it going the other way. Um, so it's going to come down to who loses their focus more against some of these other teams. And I think that City are more likely to slip up because they've done it so many times. Like, how hungry can you really be versus an Arsenal squad that, like, is still chasing it and has the memory of choking it away last year. So I like Arsenal, but I think you have to say City at this point is the favorite. We're kind of seeing it with City right now. They're in a, in a law that... It's kind of uncharacteristic that we haven't seen in a while. Losing in the Carabao Cup something. I mean, they don't seem to care too much about it. But losing against Wolves is... The stats don't show that they lose that game. But they did. And it is a major loss. And it is something to weigh in. And I think form should uh, factor into this list. So if we go on form, Arsenal's for sure number one. I don't think it should be based on form. I, think, I don't think it's just form. I don't think we can do that or else you're going to see a lot of... Form. Yeah, this it, is what I'm looking at. Here. This is what I'm looking at for the whole year, and I don't think. Yeah. I don't think. Because honestly, on form, I I've said it a couple times. I think Liverpool is the most informed team in the league right now. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm fine with having City first. I, yeah. if, can we on the Tottenham category? Can we just put not endorsed by Nick? Like a little disclaimer, a little we'll star. Put that in a caption once we post it. We don't. That's way too big for the whatever. I <laughs> would want it there. <laughs> yeah, that looks like yeah. half that shit. Yeah. Nope, nope. <laughs> I want great. it there. <laughs> I want it there. All right. Uh, other can, other debate it, topic here. The worst of the worst. I'm I'm thinking it's it's Burnley, Luton, and then Sheffield at the moment. But I feel like Luton yep. might have an argument for last. No, no. Sheffield lost 8-0. Sheffield's, Sheffield's <laughs> right. Move Sheffield all the way to the back. Yeah. There and we go. then going to the frauds category, our most heated debate on our previous pod, Chelsea, Man U. Which one of these should be going first? Chelsea. Right? Yeah, it's definitely Chelsea. I mean... They've shown that they can fucking score goals or Manchester United. Against has, has Luton them. and Burnley. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, but they score some fucking goals. What did Manchester oh United do God. against Burnley? They won one You're fucking saying, zero. The argument for Chelsea is that they score goals? The only goals they score against are relegation sites. Luton. That is the argument between these teams. I'm not Burnley. arguing Chelsea against fucking Newcastle here. I, I'm arguing them against Manchester United. Manchester United is... I don't think scoring wise, it's a a, a real real display who between has, the two. Who has the better striker, Tracy? Man, you scored twelve. Manchester Chelsea United. I think Rasmus Hoijland is probably the best striker out of the the bunch. I agree. So, but who has the best attacking player? I think Chelsea with Raheem Sterling. Oh, you think Raheem Sterling? Is you get, you pick, yes, you pick Sterling over Rashford at yes. this stage in their careers. Yes. Any That's point in their take. career. Yep. Except for maybe last season. But yeah. That's no, Raheem take. Sterling's better. He's done it for longer. He's more consistent. He can He's done run it at the highest anymore. level. Yeah, he, he can run. <laughs> He's still lightning fast. That's a shit take. <laughs> He's anyways. Fucking, no, I will say no, no, no. He he, he has been, disagree with it. He has been Chelsea's best player in attack this year. But I also do think that that's not saying too much, and I don't think their offense has looked particularly great or Raheem Sterling has looked particularly amazing in games other than the ones Neither that... Neither of these teams look good, man. <laughs> huh? None of this is saying much, dude. We're talking about Chelsea and Manchester United. I know, but... I still think, I still think Manchester United finished above Chelsea this year. What makes you think that? I think Chelsea was 12th last year. Manchester United was Champions League. Ch- Chelsea's extremely young. Even if they have a lot of potential, they're extremely young. I would trust an older Manchester United team to have the experience to pull out certain results that Chelsea are going to mess up because they have that inexperience. 
I think they're very close. Like I'm not I'm not saying Manchester United by a large margin, but I do think the experience and like the players like a Casemiro, like a Bruno Fernandez, like a Varane, Marcus Rashford can hit spurts of real great form that will carry them to points where I think are you really relying on a Moises Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, and Raheem Sterling on the other oh, side to don't bring up that midfield? Mike is still choking on their cocks, dude. Can we like relax? <laughs> like, if I, I think oh, I see it, man. I yeah, and you're fucking blind. So I think that Man U is better. I'm fine if you say Chelsea's better because the end of the day, the category says it all. They're both fucking frauds. I mean, Man U doesn't have a fucking good result in the league this year. They don't have. One fucking good result. Chelsea ties Liverpool the opening weekend. Manchester United's conceded fucking 12 goals. Chelsea's only conceded seven. Like, nothing points to Manchester United being better than Chelsea. There's not I one mean, valid point. You can also talk about all the injuries that Manchester United has. You can also talk Look about, at like, all the Rash- fucking injuries Chelsea has. You can talk about Rashford being, like, in the worst form of, like, his career at the moment. Like, let's not, I don't know. I think you have too strong of a take on it. The injury I, argument, I, they, they weigh off. They're the same. Chelsea has just as many players out. The thing is, I think I have more trust for an entire season for somebody on Manchester United, like a Bruno Fernandes, uh, Marcus Rashford, to step up into well, good form. Bruno Fernandes, okay. Rather, rather than... I didn't say Bruno Fernandes. I don't trust Mudrik to step up all of a sudden and start plopping in goals. They've both been bad. But I just trust Manchester United has the quality, better quality, that can turn it around. They've both been bad, but I think yeah, season-wise, but, but Manchester United has the What's your argument? You can't say Marcus Rashford and then say Mudrik. That's not a fair comparison. You could say but, Anthony and then no, say Mudrik. That's a better comparison. Like Raheem Sterling, I mean, I, Marcus I Rashford, more, more, trust more Marcus valid Rashford argument. Raheem Sterling, then. I think that's a more okay. fair assessment. I think Marcus Rashford can – get into form and score and be a bigger influence than Raheem Sterling is. Also, he's think- going he's going to get into form. There's going to be like a 10-game stretch where Rashford's playing really well and then he'll disappear again because that's what his career has shown is going to happen. So he's going to have a really good stretch, and when he does, they're going to get a lot of points because he's a really dangerous player and much more gifted than Raheem Sterling is. I'm not trying to shit on Raheem Sterling. I'm just saying like that's what it is. I can agree with that. Um I will say that I don't, the manager, I don't trust Eric Ten Hag though. I think that's okay. So thing. here's here is where I see Mike's point because I do think I agree with everything Flag said. Manu's squad is better. They have players who have been there and done that before. And at the end of the day, I do think they'll pick up more points than a really inexperienced Chelsea side. Except for like you can say the reason that this category is called frauds is because of that bald headed idiot over at Manu's touchline. Eric Ten Hag is a fucking moron. Not only is he, like, not playing the Ajax football to the fuck he was going to bring over, but also he's a really shitty manager of people. And that is fucking important over a year-long thing. So I have more faith. Honestly, I don't have too much faith on Mauricio Potichino anyways, but I have more faith that because Potichino is just his... Just because it's his first year... Like, I think he can get players to buy in, and then later on, relationships will sour, because we've seen that happen with him before. But Ten Hag is already in the souring point. So I'm okay putting Chelsea first in that tier. All right. We'll put Chelsea first due to the bald man. They could have a, a, a new manager buff at some point of the season where they get a lot of points. Boys, I think that's oh. the tier list. We can run through it. Do you guys have anything that you'd like to change? Any objections? Speak now or forever hold your peace? I really like this I, list. I like it. I think even as an Everton fan, I think we're a little high in that tier. I don't think we've done anything to show that we're there. I think we might be behind uh, not numb and full I, I think, think you're we're definitely wolves for sure. I don't think so. I think you're both uh, – I think you're in the right yeah. tier. You're both above Brentford Wolves, and Bournemouth. So. Wolves beat us. Wolves beat us. But watching that game, that was against the run of play, and we had so many. Like, like we, 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 were out playing, we were out playing Wolves. They got the result, but in terms of actual quality, we were out playing them. I'm fine putting Everton second to last in that tier and then Fulham last. Fulham's not. I think Fulham's better than Everton. 
at the moment. That's just because there's Americans on Fulham. That's the only reason you oh, think that they're good. <laughs> that is the only reason you think they're good. Everton's they even more than that with better results. I think until Everton proves otherwise, they're last in that tier. All right. I can. I'll wait I like for that. To... That order right there. I'll take that order right there. That's fine. That seems fair to me. All right. So for the people listening, we're running through the, the categories and teams in them. Let us know what you think in the comments. We have our front runners, and we have Manchester City first, Arsenal second. In our second tier, we have Liverpool they are walking alone here because they are the only team in this <laughs> category is the Liverpool tier is tier two. Next, we have the Spurs. They are also walking alone in their third tier. It's the Audi I, Cup I, champion. I don't endorse we that. We have to disclose that this is not endorsed by Nick. Thank uh, you. It is Tottenham Hotspur in the third tier all by themselves. And then we get into our little spicy picante team, the themes that might be able to shake up that top four, shake up that European picture. It is Newcastle first, then Brighton, and West Ham edging out Aston Villa. And that is before we get to the frauds with a money sign S. And that is where we just were debating Chelsea getting the nod over Manchester United due to the manager. And we go to our next tier, which I think is a very properly named tier. It's meh. Mm. And in meh, we have Crystal Palace, followed by Nottingham Forest, Wolves, Fulham, and closed out by the mighty Everton, who has been grossly, grossly misplaced. They should be right next to Arsenal. We know. Don't even bother putting it in the comments. We'll get it next time. But then... We get to the teams, and then the second to last tier, it is the tier, happy the other teams just suck more. It is Brentford and Bournemouth, and they might might suck more. So we're just hoping that the last team, the they showed, they showed up, also named They Tried tier, it is Burnley, Luton, and Mr. Irrelevant of the tier list is Sheffield United. Brock Purdy maybe can give them some hope that it's it's not all last or all lost being in last place here. Um, I'm not convinced that Sheffield's tried. They showed up, but <laughs> I don't know about trying. That's a little more credit than they deserve. They showed That's up fair. Is, is all we can say for them. And yeah, Newcastle result really puts them as the the try taken away. They are not the try guys. Now we move into our locks of the week. We get a score update here with producer P. Producer P, take it away with our our score update for our listeners here. Wow, wow, wow! Let me pull it up real quick. Oh, that's not it. Um, Bournemouth has really disappointed us this season, huh? <laughs> we, 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 I still like watching them play. If I'm being yeah. honest, I do too. But I expected more. Maybe they'll turn it around at some point. I think they'll turn it around. So for our locks of the week, go to full screen on the other screen here. Boom. We've got Nick and Flags tied at one point each and Mike taking two an points, early, bitch. Fuck off. Two points. two points each and Mike taking an early lead, uh, lead at the start with four. Wow. Nearly got the score on Fulham Sheffield. But a late goal from Fulham to make it three one. Yeah, but I'm just just happy I got there as well with Chelsea Burnley. Feel good there. Yeah, good pick. Good pick. Flash, you should be happy about that. Spurs, they they just got it. Changed. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, Where yeah. That team that struggled against Luton, Luton, that's the team that you're putting on it. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, Arsenal had very close results against. Not so great teams either. So yeah, but yeah. again, we're choosing Luton, Burnley, and Sheffield as below everything else. All right. Well, whatever. That is our our score update: two, two, and four for Mike in the lead. He is riding a a hot streak here. Hopefully, he fucks up soon, so me and Nick can get back into it. Never. Yeah, I'm hitting uh, one next week. I feel good. Or we can just actually be good at this. But well, I'm hitting one next week. week. I'm hitting one next week. Look, All right, Sheffield's getting a win next week. I'm taking them. All right, I'll I'll look for that as your hot. 
Uh, now, favorite. after Mike says something a little out there and questionable, we will get to Palmer's question, which will probably also be out there and questionable. Palmer, what is your, your weekly question for the boys? All right, boys. So, uh, I know nothing about soccer. Um, this is true. He really says true. that every week. <laughs> <It's crazy. Yeah. laughs> this is why I have to ask the questions. Now, there is one man that no matter what he does, he always uh, just blows up the internet. And he, he always, you know, no matter what it is, just enthralls the people with his decision making and uh, and his takes. And I'm not talking about Kanye West. I am speaking of the man, the myth, the legend, Elon Musk. Oh my God. <laughs> That's flattering. <laughs> so my question for you today, being the richest man on the planet, if Elon Musk were to buy a soccer team, which team would it be? And would it be a good thing for the team? Damn. I think it'd be... <laughs> you know what team I think it'd be? I think it'd be Everton. Uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah, 100% I, who it would be. I think it'd be Everton. It it'd needs be to be a Wolves team that has because we think the logo logo is cool. <laughs> that's all it would take. That is all it would take for him. He thinks the logo is cool, and all of a sudden, Mbappe Island, all <laughs> both there. He's gonna spend forty three billion like he did on Twitter. He's gonna send like a Twitter DM to some to PSG's owner offering like a, a full billion and he's going to be held to it. I take back my Everton take. It's it'd be Valencia. It'd be Valencia. He would buy Valencia, arguably the worst run club in sports at the moment, even though their young players are playing well in the Liga this year. Shout out to Valencia, my favorite Spanish team. Um, but Peter Lim is a fucking idiot. And I think Elon Musk would enjoy, I, he, I think he'd want to buy a team with a little bit of like, status that's why i thought everton but like obviously a team that's not doing their full potential so i would say i would say either that or like a maybe like a german team just because he looks like a nazi a little bit i don't know something like that <laughs> i think you buy an established team how about um, man U? I think it's i, I can see him buying it from the glazers sure. he would not buy man U. They're, by the way the answer He's to the second part of this question internet told him to Spurs fit. <laughs> no, fits Spurs brain. do not fit. Spurs do Bro, not. I don't know. I I think he, that might be his team. Whatever team he I buys, would love. It would not it would not do any good for the team. Yes. It'd be a fucking <laughs> yeah. dumpster fire. Absolutely. It'd be like yeah. Todd Bowley 2.0. Yes. He'd be he'd like start paying subscription fees for fucking tickets. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's fucking stupid. He changed the name to like the fucking Manchester United X Wings. The X Men. Manchester bro. United <laughs> F 13 fighters. Dude, it, it would be something insane. Tesla would be the sponsor. And he would he would not make the fans happy. Wait. You know what? Boy. He he would not buy a team, but I like Tesla as a sponsor. That'd be kind of cool. Tesla Stadium? It'd look cool. He could join Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney for re- no. X they would oh, not let him in. <laughs> they would not let him in. Those guys are way too cool to hang out with fucking Elon Musk, bro. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Look at this guy. He's the coolest Elon cat Musk on the fucking, fucking planet. Okay. Good question, Father. Sugar Daddy that Wrexham needs. Imagine Wrexham making their way through the championship with Mbappe. Okay. He's not He's buying just... Mbappe. <laughs> He would. He would be. He would be a horrible owner. He would suck. He'd be so hands off. He's got too much shit going on. I think he might be too hands on. Might be the issue. Is he would be trying too much stupid shit like he does with like X. Yeah, I agree. Um, All right, yeah, good question, Bobby. Yeah, These are happens. the important questions. Yeah. All right. Let us know what you think Elon Musk would do and how it would go in the comments. <laughs> uh. Thank you for another great episode. Subscribe, follow, listen for no new episodes and turn on notifications. Boys, any final words? Nope. Arsenal on the way to the league. Up the Arsenal.
Crystal Palace finishing ninth this year. You heard it here first. <laughs> Shut up. All right. For all our Palace fans out there, Mike is on your side. He chooses a random fan base to make happy each podcast. Last week it was Chelsea <laughs> Palace. Crystal Palace. Come on. Who will be next? Listen to the next podcast to find out. But until then, boys, peace. Later, Stop gentlemen. Just united. <laughs>